We're busy looking at statement logic, and now specifically we're going to be looking at logical equivalences. And logical equivalences play a big role in proving statements going forward in algebra. But let's first define what a logical equivalence is. If I've got two statements P and Q, we say those statements are logically equivalent if they're the same from a logical viewpoint. So what does that mean? That means those statements have the same truth value for the same combination of truth values of their components. We'll look at examples shortly. So the symbol we use is three lines, not an equal sign. They're logically equivalent. All right, so statements are logically equivalent if they've got the same truth value for the combination of the truth values of their components. So let's yet again use truth tables because that's the simplest way to break down logical statements. So let's look at this logical equivalence. I'm already telling you it's going to be logically equivalent, but let's show it. I'm saying not P and Q is logically equivalent to not P or not Q. Now, the reason I say this is significant going forward is if you would like to prove an algebraic statement, any mathematical statement, if I would like to prove something like this, to be true or false. I might as well prove this one. These two are interchangeable. So sometimes it's easier to prove one side than the other side, and then logical equivalences are important. So, but let's just break it down to their basic details. Let's look at the truth table. So we've got P and Q we're working with. True, true, false, false. True, false, true, false. On the left-hand side, we've got not P and Q. So I've got to look at P and Q. And don't try and rush this. Don't try and skip columns and do something in one step. Do it systematically. All right. Then I need to look at not P and Q. Then I need to look at not P, not Q. And I'm running out of columns here. I need to look at not P or not Q. So let's take a look. We'll add those in. P, Q. So let's first look at P and Q. True, false, false, false. Only true when P and Q are true. Not P and Q is then false, true, true, true. Not P. So this is the one side. This is my left hand side. I've got it there. Not P is false, false, true, true. Not Q is false, true, true false, true. Then not P or not Q. So or is true when one of them is true. False, false. So this one's false. One of them is true. So it's true, true, true. All right. Now I look at what I want to show that those two are logically equivalent. Let's take a look at these two columns. They have the same truth value for the same combination of truth values of their components. So I can conclude we knew it was true when we started because that's how the example was chosen. But if we just had to test it, I can now conclude that not P and Q is logically equivalent to not P or not Q. Let's look at the next one. Not P implies Q is logically equivalent to P and not Q. So just take a look before we prove it. We're talking about an implication and the negation of an implication, the negation of an if-then. So we're saying not P implies Q is logically equivalent to this. So like I said, if we want to prove the one side, we can prove the other side. We can use them interchangeably because they're logically equivalent statements. So we've got P, we've got Q. True, true, false, false. True, false, true, false. P implies Q, I know is true. It's false only if I've got a true implies false. The other times it's true. So not P implies Q is then false, true, false, false. So that's the left hand side. Let's look at the right hand side. I've got P and not Q, but I which means I still need not Q. I don't have a column for not Q. Not Q is false, true, false, true. So then P and not Q. Now, when you look at these, make sure you know which columns you're dealing with. True and false is false. True and true is true. 
false and false is false. I said true, but I wrote false. False and false is false. False and true is false. So which columns am I comparing? Those two. Same truth value for the different combinations of the truth values of P and Q. So those two statements is logically equivalent. And that also informs us of what the negation of an implication looks like. So not P implies Q is logically equivalent to, equivalent to P and not Q. All right. One more. If and only if. I'm saying A if and only if B is logically equivalent to A implies B and B implies A. Now, if you look at the symbols, that would make sense. The implication is one way. If and only if is a biconditional. So it's a two-way implication. So it's the one way and the other way. So let's show that it's logically equivalent. We've got A and B. True, true. False, false. True, false. True, false. We've got A if and only if B. That is true, false, false, true. So let's look at A implies B and B implies A. A implies B, true implies true is true, true implies false is false, true, true. B implies A, so I'm going this way, true implies true is true, false implies true is true, true implies false is false, false implies false is true. So A implies B and B implies A, true and true is true. False and true is false. True and false is false. True and true is true. These are the columns we're comparing, so we can conclude that this is true. A if and only if B is logically equivalent to A implies B and B implies A. Because they've got the same truth value for the com different combinations of their component, truth values of their components. Now, logical equivalences, showing it with truth tables, it's a lot of fun because you're just looking at true and false and looking at all the options. These are a lot of them that you can show. So if you want to practice these, these are logical equivalences we have. And they have got names. The commutative laws, A and B is logically equivalent to B and A. And A or B is logically equivalent to B or A. Idempotent laws, A and A is logically equivalent to A. A or A is logically equivalent to A. Associative laws, you can look at those. Distributive, double negation. De Morgan's laws, we've looked at one of those. Then we've got the if and only if that we've looked at. Here's another one. We looked at the negation of the implication, but the implication A implies B is also logically equivalent to not A or B. Go test that one. Because if it's sometimes... Mathematically too, di too difficult to show that A implies B, I can show that not A or B is true. And then we've got the contrapositive. We're going to talk about this shortly. A implies B, we say, is logically equivalent to not B implies not A. All right, which is also a commonly used one in proving theorems. So let's just look. If I've got a conditional statement, A implies B, we can derive some other conditionals. There's the converse, B implies A. The inverse, not A implies not B. And the contrapositive, not B implies not A. Now, these are just, this is the converse of the conditional, the inverse of the conditional, and the contrapositive of the conditional. But what you need to know is if the conditional is true, it doesn't mean its converse is true. For example, let's go back to the English example we had when we looked at the implication. If it rains, then the road is wet. The converse says if the road is wet, then it rains. But that's not true. We know the road could be wet for other reasons. The inverse is also not true. If it's not raining, that implies the road is not wet. Well, no, the road could be wet from something. But the contrapositive is the special one. If it rains, then the road is wet. If the road is not wet, then we can conclude it definitely didn't rain. So that is true. The road is not wet, 
so we can conclude it didn't rain. All right, but let's prove these with a truth table. We're now just using intuitive understanding of language. So A is true, true, false, false. B, true, false, true, false. Then we have not A, false, true, oh, false, false, true, true, false, true, false, true. Okay, A implies B, I know is true, false, true, true. If it feels like this is going too fast, then pause and work it out for yourself with the knowledge we've had have up to now. B implies A, true, false implies true is true. True and true implies false is false, false implies false is true. Not A implies not B, so I'm looking at these two columns. False implies false is true. False implies true is true. True implies false is false. And false implies true is true. And the last one, not B implies not A. False implies false is true. True implies false is false. False implies true is true, and true implies true is true. So what are we seeing? I'm looking at A implies B. B implies A is not logically equivalent to A implies B. They don't have the same truth values. Apologies. Not A implies not B is also not logically equivalent to A implies B because they don't have the same truth values. But... The contrapositive not B implies not A has the same truth values as A implies B, so they are logically equivalent. All right, so let's just look at a little bit more complicated conditional, not too much. If we had to write down the converse of P implies Q, let's just remind ourselves the converse of A implies B is B implies A. So the converse of P implies Q, of P implies P or Q is P or Q implies P. Keep the brackets around that to make sure it's together. The inverse is not P implies not P or Q. Now we can rewrite that as not P, P implies not P and not Q. Because I know those two have the same logical values. The contrapositive is not P or Q implies not P. And I again can write this as not P and not Q implies not P. You can keep them in brackets just to keep it tidy. So that is looking at logical equivalences and playing around with a conditional statement.